Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. Today we are talking about the importance of swatching your paints. This can be done with all paints. It doesn't have to be solely watercolors. And this is an older palette that I'm showing you here, but I just wanted to share with you my watercolors process. I recommend, of course, always swatch on the paper that you use the most. Um, because paper does react very differently. For watercolor, it's really important to use decent quality paper. Here we have an example of a swatch done on good paper versus um, a multimedia paper. So you can see the difference very clearly with the texture, with the vibrancy of the paint itself. And these are from the exact same palette. So I highly encourage to swatch your colors on the kind of paper that you are most likely to use. And if that is a variety, say you're working in a sketchbook for just practice and different paper for your finished pieces, maybe swatch it twice just so you know what you're getting. When I swatch my colors, if it is a set, I like to keep it all together on one little sheet of paper. So I will count up how many colors or spaces I need trace out my boxes however I feel like I'm going to do it. Sometimes I get a lot more precise and I may or may not tape it and just try to use this also as an exercise in control. And I like to lay down my colors as a graded wash so I can see just how dark to how light I can get it. But before I even start painting, I make my divisions and I put a solid black line through all the boxes. I usually do this in Sharpie, something really fast. The reason why I do this is because I want to see just how opaque some of these colors can get or how dark they can get when you're using a highly saturated version of the paint. So I go through the entire set of colors working from as saturated as I can get to as light as I can get with it and then I let it dry. This kind of practice gives you a really good idea of how the colors themselves behave if it is granulating and what you can expect when you work with it. If you are working with individual paints, say two paints, and you create your own set, you don't have to do it on a sheet like this. You can also swatch your colors on individual cards and collect them all together in a D-ring. That way you can swap it out with what you currently have or just keep a collection of a particular brand's color selection. At this point, I like to see how well the colors lift on the paper that I'm using. And by lifting, I mean removing of that pigment. So I'll take what I found to be an easy way is a water brush pen and working from light to the darker end, I re-wet that paint trying to reactivate it and see how much of that color I can actually lift off. This can be very, very useful in practice if you make a mistake or you don't leave enough white highlights. It is a very nice thing to know, can you lift your color at all or to what degree? Once all the colors are swatched, I go in and of course I need to label them so I know what is what. A lot of people like to make their swatches on a sheet of paper that is the same size as the palette themselves so that they can keep it with it, especially if you are the type that like to travel with your pink colors. Thank you all for watching. I hope you find this as useful as I do. It makes a huge difference with how well you understand your colors and palettes. 
And starting next week, new videos will be posted every Saturday instead of Friday, so I hope that doesn't throw you off too much. I just really could use that extra day of prepping videos. In the description, you can also find links on other places to find me all over the internet. I hope to connect with you and meet you there. In the meanwhile, happy painting!